Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. We've got another gorgeous sunny day here in New England, but the wind is up, and it's been blowing pretty good. There are some breaks in the wind, but uh, it's a almost constant breeze with some gusts that are pushing probably 15 miles an hour. It's not a really good day to shoot. Now, uh, what is this gun that I'm shooting today? This is my HW-50S. This is uh, in a custom stock by Steve Corcoran, and it's a, a beautiful nickel-plated finish. They call it the stainless steel look. Um, I, I picked this up at a gun show last summer. I, I absolutely love this rifle. Uh, if you follow back through my videos, you may have seen it in a previous video when I introduced you to the gun and another video where we tore it down and we did a rebuild on it, trying to get the power up where it belongs and also fixing a really bad cocking stroke due to a bent cocking arm. Uh, that's an interesting video. If you haven't seen it yet, I'd advise just uh, going up to my channel. You'll find the HW50S. Um, anyway, what we're doing today is we're, we're shooting out here in the wind and I'm not really doing, doing too good because of the wind so I've decided to bring things inside because as I'm shooting this gun which is extremely accurate absolutely wonderful I'll put up a, a shot here of a 10 shot group I shot with it the other night it's just phenomenal um, so anyway I'm, I'm really pleased with the gun but I don't like the buzz it's got the tiniest little bit of spring buzz I'll show you what I mean it's not a lot when I took the gun apart uh, in that previous video, we did lubricate the spring with some clear tar. Now, that's a lighter grade of spring tar than the heavy stuff, the black stuff that we've uh, been known to use on this channel. Um, both of those, heavy tar and clear tar, are available from Air Rifle Headquarters or Jim McCary. That's where I buy mine. Um, and so, what we're going to do today is we're going to fix this little bit of noise. Now, check this out. Can you hear that little dent? Well, when you've got the gun up against your shoulder, that dent turns into a lot of vibration and it's um it's very distracting to me i just don't like the buzz you guys have, that have been following my channel for any length of time you know that drives me crazy uh and even with this little rifle um, with this little bit of buzz it's just enough to say it's distracting so because today's not a good day to work in outside here with the rifle a little buzz again yeah we're going to take it inside we're going to put it on the bench we're going to tear it down again we're just going to pull a spring out we're going to clean it up get that clear tar off of there and we're going to replace the clear tar with some heavy black tar and that's all we're going to do and you're going to see a huge difference when we're all done so that's today's project we're going to take this gun down um, clean the spring apply some black tar to it reassemble it and we'll compare this sound to the sound that we get when it's done we're going to do that a couple of more times because it's not that easy to hear it is um, a very minor amount of spring buzz but it's just enough to annoy me when I shoot this rifle. <laughs> it shoots so good, I, I want it perfect. It's not shooting really fast, but that's okay because it's shooting really straight. Spring buzz. So we're gonna get rid of that. And then next time you hear this gun, at the end of this video, it's gonna sound nice and quick and fast with absolutely no vibration whatsoever. So this will be the last shot before we do the job. All right. That's what you got. I hope you can hear that. So anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun Channel. Stick around. I'll meet you at the bench. Okay, so we're at the bench with the uh, HW Model 50S. This is the nickel-plated version. Uh, like I told you uh, at the beginning of the video, we're here to just take the spring out, clean it up, and add a little bit of black spring tar, which is over here somewhere. That's the clear tar. I should have got that ready first. Here we go. This is our black spring tar from Air Rifle Headquarters. All right, so the first thing you do when you take apart a viral gun, of course, is take the stock off. I did that off camera. If you, if you can't pull the stock off without my help, you shouldn't be doing this job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at any rate, but now we've got the uh, the rifle bare. We're ready to go to work. The first thing we're going to do is um, drive out these two pins here. This is going to free up the trigger unit. However, when the rear of the trigger unit drops out, that's going to free up the safety uh, to fall out of the gun or actually launch out of the gun under spring tension because that safety has a spring in there as well. Um, so when I pull this trigger group, I'm going to retain that safety so it doesn't fly and then we can take it out of the gun from there. All right, so the first step again is to remove these two pins. I usually do this across my lap, but I want you to be able to see. So let me try to brace it up on top of something here. Just like that. So we can get a little bit of movement out of those pins. 
It doesn't really matter which one you take out first. I'm just going to drive it right through. And we'll do the same to both pins. There is a difference. The rear pin is the shorter pin. So there, that's the rear pin. And then the forward pin is the longer pin, like that. All right? So I don't know if you can see that there, but you got the long pin and the short pin. The short pin goes behind the trigger. The long pin goes in front of the trigger. All right, so now we've got the, pin, uh, the pins removed, which means that the trigger group is ready to be re uh, removed from the gun. Uh, again, reminder, hold that safety in place as you pull the trigger group out of the rifle. All right, so there's your whole trigger group out of the way. Now I'm going to relieve the tension on the safety and pull that out as well. All right, and we'll set that aside. Okay, from there, on the 50, and on, I believe on the uh, Model 95 as well, there, there's these little square lugs that has to be removed. Now, you're going to have to reach inside with a tool. Some people use a, a small Allen wrench, anything that's got a little hook to it. Um, I happen to be fortunate enough to have some dental um, picks that uh, my ex-wife, who was a dental assistant, um, grabbed for me. Um, so she was a dental assistant among quite a few other things, but that's another topic. <laughs> There's a reason why she's my ex-wife. Anyway, so we're going to go in here and we're going to push out one of those and we're going to try to do the next one. Sometimes they don't come out real easy. And this one did. Okay, so once those are out, you can get to the other two with that same punch that you used to drive the pins out. All right, so we'll just put this punch through. Well, maybe you can't use the same one. You're going to need a slightly smaller punch. <clears throat> and we're just going to drop that through the hole and give it a little tap to knock that other piece out. There's one. Hit the deck. i got to find that now. And it's a little tough to get on the, the stud. You'll see a little stud on the bottom of that lug. Go. All right, so there's four lugs all together, and if you look closely, there's a little um, stud. I, I'm hoping you can see that. I can't tell if I'm in focus or not, but if you look at that, there's a little um, projection that sticks up in the center, and that engages with a hole down inside the uh, the receiver of the rifle. All right, I dropped one of those. I got to find that before I forget. Okay, so now that all four lugs are out, we can take the next step. Now the next step is to remove this whole assembly out of the gun. I don't know if you can see here, but it's keyed in. There's like a little lug uh, and the spring tension from the mainspring is pushing against this whole internal assembly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I add a little pressure to the center. I, I've got a little piece of a dowel here that I, I'm gonna use for that purpose. And I'll try to rotate the gun off of this lug. If that doesn't work, I'm just gonna put a screwdriver in there and I'm gonna give it a little twist to remove that lug. All right, so just a little downward pressure. Again, you are working against the mainspring, so keep that in mind. There's quite a bit of tension on that mainspring. So we're gonna push down relatively hard and turn counterclockwise. And then that should release the mainspring and this plug just like that. So we'll take that all out. So that's the, uh, bait, I, I'm gonna call that the breech plug. And here's our mainspring with a little bit of clear tar. Uh, the forward washer came out with it. We'll make sure that goes back in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna clean all that junk off this spring. This is a Makari kit. It has the, the nylon spring guide as well as a top hat. All right, we don't have to be too finicky about how well we clean it because we're just going to add spring tar to it so it's going to be messy anyway so really that's it that's the whole thing in a nutshell we just got all that clear tar off of there now we're going to put on a liberal amount of spring tar okay by liberal i mean enough to coat those coils look at that stuff it's so thick if I didn't know better, and I don't know better, <laughs> I would say that's old fashioned wheel bearing grease that we used to pack wheel bearings with when I was younger. Uh, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna grab a glove so I don't get covered in this stuff. All right, so now we'll take that spring. We'll take a good dab of spring tar, just like that. And we're just gonna apply it to the spring, up and down. 
try to get it all in those coils. We don't want big globs anywhere, but we do want the coils to be pretty well, well uh, coated in spring tar. All right, so let's wrap that stuff around here. Take that guide out of there for a minute. A little more. Now, a lot of guys will see all this spring tar and go, oh, you should never put that much on your spring. You're gonna slow your rifle down. Well, I don't care how slow this rifle shoots as long as it shoots straight and it shoots very straight. So I'm very pleased with how the rifle performs um, without being all that powerful. That really isn't a big concern of mine on this particular gun. There are guns that I would not do this to uh, because I want to keep the power where it is. But this particular gun, this needs this in order to uh, complete the package, which is a really nice shooting rifle. <clears throat> Look at me, I'm covered. <laughs> all right, we're going to get that spring down. And, I mean, this washer, um, I guess maybe I can, because everything's so sticky, I can probably just stick it right on the front of that spring. I mean, that top hat, yeah, look at that. All right, and we're gonna insert all that back into the gun, just like so. Okay, let me get rid of these gloves so I can see and feel what I'm doing here. Okay, something I should have mentioned earlier, uh, something you have to be careful of, is this um, little piece of blued steel back here, uh, in the uh, forward portion of the, the rear end plug. Uh, this will come out of here. This is just a threaded lug. As you can see, it does just fall out of the, the gun. So you wanna make sure that um, you don't lose that. Put it back in so that the contour of the radius is the same and it'll be good to go, just like so. So don't lose that when you pull the gun apart. I should have mentioned that earlier. <clears throat> okay, so now if you look at the, uh, the plug, We've got a flat face, which is the exposed portion on the rear of the gun. And then we have a, the forward face, which has the hole in it to uh, <clears throat> allow for the, uh, the uh, trigger, not trigger, but piston rod to go back and engage with the trigger. All right, to keep this in place right now, because it is going to keep falling out, I'm going to put a little bit of spring tar on the back of that just to make it sticky. And then I'll put it right back where it belongs and hopefully That'll keep it in place so it won't fall out. All right, so now it's just a matter of putting this plug back in the rifle. And that's pretty much the same thing in reverse. We're gonna push down using this little block that I made. And you can make one easy enough out of a dowel or you can just find any small piece of round material, even a cap from a jar, um, just to give you something to, to push on the center of that with so that you can either put the spring back in or take it back out, whichever the case may be. There we go. Right, that goes in first. And of course you want the slot facing the slot here. All right, I'm gonna turn that just a little bit counterclockwise so that this lug right here can slide up. And then when we get to the position that it's lined up here, we're gonna twist the uh, rifle and hopefully engage that lug. All right, so here's how we do that. Put it down in that center block again. I'm gonna push down. I got to turn it a little bit to get it so it'll clear and then turn to the right and that's it it's back in the lug is now engaged with the slot in the side of the receiver tube all right now that that's done we're going to go ahead and put in these little <coughs> uh, square lugs they go in like so just like that and you can give them a tap down if they don't drop right into place if they've taken a lot of force that probably means that something's not right so, you know just use your head when you tap them down don't just hammer on them all right we'll get all four of those in you got to kind of get them so that they line up if they go in and they're sitting cockeyed don't tap it with the hammer make sure it kind of drops in part of the way and then you can finish the job with the mallet and you'll see me use this particular mallet a lot i bought this at um, a place that sells uh, cheap Chinese things in New England is called uh, Job Lot, Ocean State Job Lot. I'm sure you have similar places where you can buy cheap tools that are made in China and uh, things along those lines. And This I bought, I think I paid $2 for it way back when and it's, I use it 
almost every time I work on an air rifle because it's a solid brass hammer. It doesn't leave marks in the metal. It doesn't deform the metal. Um, and it's just ideal for most of the tasks that I do with air rifles. So rather than use a steel hammer, I always use the brass one. This last one gives me a little trouble. So we'll just keep messing with it until we get it to start. All right, I'm going to get it a couple of taps to see what happens here. There we go. That's all it needed. Just a little tighter. I got some spring tar on the action. I'm going to wipe that off with a little isopropyl alcohol and a rag. <clears throat> All right, I'll just get that off of there. Beautiful. Okay. Now we got a pretty gun. So, of course, when you do a job like this, you got to take the stock off the gun. And I'm not the stock, but the scope. So I had this thing perfectly zeroed, and I know I'm going to have to do that again uh, now that we've had the gun all apart and the scope's been removed and put back in place. So that'll be uh, something I do on a much calmer day. Like I said, today is a little too windy for this. All right, so now the trigger group goes back in. So we're gonna take that safety with the spring. The spring goes in the, over the narrow side of the safety um, and you, it only fits through the breech block one way and that's from the left side to the right, just like that. And just push it in and hold it in position. Oops, <laughs> which is why, do you see what just happened when my finger slipped off? It launched itself. So we're gonna hold that like so. I'm going to take the trigger group, oh, before we do, on uh, the record trigger system, the Viral record trigger, or record trigger, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, you have to cock the trigger or set the trigger before you can install it in the gun. And to do that, you're just going to push down on this top bar and make sure that the rear bar engages. So now the top bar is, is locked into position with the rear bar here. So push push down and over here at the same time, and that'll lock it up. If you pull the trigger, it'll unlock. So again, we're gonna push down. You need a tool kind of to do that. And then push this rear piece in position. I'll show you. Just like that and like that. All right, so now the trigger's set. Try not to touch that trigger as you're installing it into the gun. Otherwise, it'll unset and it may interfere with cocking the rifle. <laughs> okay, so one of the other things on the trigger group that I should have mentioned earlier is if you look right here, there's a little nut in the back some of these viral guns, that nut is very loose and it'll fall out. This one here, it's not. It stays in place pretty well. But uh, if, uh, if, if you um, do this job, make sure you keep an eye on that little square nut. It does slide right out, so you can set it aside if it's loose. In this case, I was able to leave it in position. Again, so we're going to put the trigger in so that the trigger's um, set in the right direction. The hook is going to go in like so. We'll get the front end started a little bit, just like this. Oops, I hit that trigger. See, that's what I'm talking about. Got to reset the trigger. Like so. And try not to touch it when you reinstall it. All right, so again, I'm going to hold the safety down. Get that set in here like so. Push it all the way up in position. You can look down and see if you're close with the holes for the pins. Again, the short pin goes to the rear of the trigger group. Just tap that down until it gets started go and then the longer pin goes to the forward end and once you've got that pin started you can go ahead and release the safety there's no no danger of the safety flying uh, once the pins are in the gun all right so we'll take our pin punch and we'll finish that job I'm just kind of setting these down so they're relatively flush on both sides this is a little too far out on this side so I'm kind of finicky about this, and if it's not relatively flush, it'll interfere when you try to set it in the stock. All right, we'll do the forward pin. And we'll see how that looks. That's perfect. All right, we'll do another wipe down. And that is how you put spring tar on a spring. We didn't have to take the piston out of the gun. The piston seal is brand new. I replaced that with when I put the uh, Makari kit in the gun. Um, so we, we know we're good there. So now it's just a matter of putting the rifle back in the stock. We'll take it outside and I'll show you the difference. All right, so the job is completed. We put some spring tar on the spring after we cleaned up the old grease. We put the rifle back in the stock and we're ready to do the, uh, the comparison test now and see what we have for results. 
Um, now again, all we did was take the spring out, clean it, and then coat it with a, uh, a good coating of uh, spring tar, and let's see if it made a difference. So here's the way it sounded before. All right, and here's the way it sounds now. <laughs> I didn't hear any buzz, did you? Let's try it again. Wonderful. I'm very pleased. No vibration, no buzzing, none of that nonsense. Safety off. Again, before. Now after. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. And I'm really pleased. I can see I still have to wipe this rifle down. It's got my fingerprints all over it from that spring tar. <laughs> all right. This is the last shot before. Now after. Oof. My goodness. What a difference. All right. So that is a success, I would say. A very simple job. I don't think it took any more than 15 minutes to complete it. So we're going to celebrate a job well done by reaching out there at 60 yards and ringing that bell for you. We got some wind today, so it might take a couple of tries, but let's see what we get. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. I'm so pleased. This gun shoots so sweet now. All right, we'll hit that bell again just because it's fun. And with that, I want to thank you folks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Airgun channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Hit the bell to be reminded of future videos. And by all means, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day.